Your friends in Jesus. As I preach to an, an empty church, I'm reminded of the time when I went to one of the biggest churches in America. They meet in a, a basketball arena in, in Houston, Texas. My family, I attended the church on a Saturday evening, and so it was almost empty too. There were only four or 5,000 people there. It happened over 10 years ago, but I can still remember the, the pastor's message. His message was, God has placed everything under your feet. It was a powerful message. Under your feet. No matter what you face in life, you can know that it is under your feet. It sounded so good. People nodded. People applauded. There were amens. Pastor said, if you've been having trouble with your boss at work, you can walk into your boss's office and say to him, you're under my feet. And before you know it, that office is going to be yours. You've been struggling financially. You can look at that big pile of bills and say, you're under my feet. And before you know it, you'll have more money than you know what to do with. If you've been struggling with cancer, you can look cancer in the eye and say, you're under my feet and it won't harm you because God has made you this promise. God has put everything under your feet. Amen. People loved it. Unless you've actually had cancer. If you have, you've, you've probably learned something. Cancer doesn't listen to what you say. Most bosses and bills don't either. If you've been struggling at work, it's, it's not that simple. Under your feet. It sure doesn't seem that way in life, does it? In fact, it often seems like nothing in life is under my feet, like nothing in life is under my control. And the pandemic has certainly emphasized that for us, hasn't it? Did you have any control over the things that have happened over the past two months? seems like it's completely out of our control. Doesn't that make you frustrated? Why doesn't God keep his promise? Why hasn't God put everything under your feet? Well, here's why. It's because the Bible doesn't actually say that at all. It sure sounds good to hear that, that everything in life is under my feet. But the Bible never says that. That preacher in that megachurch had, had twisted God's word to make it say what he wanted to say, to make it say what, what we wanted to hear. The, the Bible doesn't say that everything's under your feet. Do you know what it says? Our lesson tonight said, God has placed all things under his feet. So who's he? It's Jesus. God has placed all things under Jesus' feet. This is the great truth of Ascension Day, that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rules over heaven and earth for our good. Everything is under Jesus' feet. We're not the only ones who need to be reminded of that. As Pastor Paul in the, in the Bible wrote to the Christians in the city of Ephesus, he thanked God for their faith in Jesus and for their love for God's people. But then he prayed for them. Prayed for them a lot. He said, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. It's fitting that today on the last day of school for the kids in our school, we're reminded that learning about Jesus never ends. Paul prayed that those Christians would keep learning to know God better. He prayed that the eyes of their hearts would be enlightened so that you may know the hope to which he has called you. You want to know hope? Then know, know this. Your life has never been in your own hands. Your life is in the, the nail-marked hands of your Savior Jesus who died and rose for you. But actually, the hope that we have in God goes way back before Jesus died on the cross. Just before these verses at the beginning of the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul tells us that 
God chose us in him even before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Our hope in God goes way back before the creation of the world. God has promised you and me that even before he created the world, he chose you and me to be his. Wow. That means that you are are rich. Did you know that? Paul kept on praying. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Paul prayed that you would know that that you're rich. In fact, if, if God has chosen you to be his own son or daughter, do you know how rich you are? Maybe this will help. Michael Jordan has put his mansion in Chicago up for sale. In his mansion, there are nine bedrooms, 19 bathrooms, a full-size NBA basketball court, a swimming pool. and Do you know something? That's nothing. That is nothing compared with your inheritance. The streets of heaven are paved in gold. Michael's driveway isn't. On top of that, in heaven there is no more death or mourning or crying or pain. You will be forever with the Lord. You are rich. Do you know that? And yet there's something that's even bigger. Paul keeps on praying. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know his incomparably great power for us who believe. Your God has incomparably great power. And when you see that phrase in the Bible, it's almost like God is inviting you to ask, okay, God, so how big is it? How powerful are you? And he says that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is invoked, not only in this present age, but also in the age to come. Power even over death. Power over every authority. Power over presidents and pandemics, both now and forevermore. That's power. Do you know what God has done with his power? God the Father has used his power to put everything under Jesus' feet. Our lesson ends by saying, God has placed all things under his feet and has appointed him to be head over everything for the church. Everything is under Jesus' feet. That same power that God used to create the universe, that same power that God used to flood the world, the same power that God used to send the ten plagues, to split the Red Sea, to stop the sun in the sky, the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead, that is the power that Jesus has as your Savior, as the King of the world, as he reigns on his throne. No matter what you're facing in your life, it's under Jesus' feet. And here's the best part. Listen again to that verse. It says, God has placed all things under his feet and has appointed him to be head over everything for the church. Don't miss those last three words. For the church. This incredibly great power that Jesus has, he's using it right now for the good of the church, for you and for me. You know that verse in the book of Romans, don't you? The one that says, We know that in all things God is working for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. There is a king. He's a good king. It's Jesus. He's reigning over everything. He's reigning over everything for you. Everything is under Jesus' feet. Isn't that exactly what we need to hear when we go through difficult times? We need the message of Ascension Day. When you have to stare death in the face, may God open your eyes 
to see the hope to which he has called you. When you're worried about what the future holds, when life seems like it's out of control, may God open your eyes to see the incredibly great power of Jesus Christ, your Savior. When it seems like you've lost so much, may God open your eyes to see the riches of his glorious inheritance that's waiting for you in heaven. Hope, riches, power. Isn't that what every single person in the world is looking for right now? Hope, riches, and power. They're found in Jesus. All of it is found in Jesus. Everything is under his feet. So how, how come you and I still have so little peace in our lives? Well, there's one little detail that we haven't talked through yet. If God has placed all things under Jesus' feet, do you know what's included in all things? You are. This is the part that, that we hate. At least this is the part that a part of us really hates. It's great to know that all the bad things are under Jesus' feet. It's great to know that all the people who bother us are under Jesus' feet. But my sinful nature absolutely hates the thought of putting myself under anyone else's authority. There is already someone who is king in my heart, and it's not Jesus. Do you know who it is? It's me. Just like I bet in your heart, it's you. So when the Bible tells us today, on Ascension Day, that Jesus is king, to be honest, there's no message that sounds more un-American than that. Our whole country has been founded on the idea that there is no king, that we're free to do what we want, that we don't have to listen to anybody else, that we can make decisions for ourselves. How often aren't those thoughts shouted out at you? in our society today. But more often that, how often aren't those thoughts shouted out at you from, from your own sinful heart? I could do it on my own. I don't need anybody else's help. I can handle it. I am strong enough on my own. How much of the heartache in your life is a result of insisting that you be king? How much of your, the pain in your life is caused from you foolishly thinking that Life is under your control. Just think of the things that go through our minds. How come Jesus doesn't just, you fill in the blank. Why doesn't God, you fill in the blank. Those questions race through your mind. When that's what we're, we're shouting out to God, just think about what we're trying to do. We're trying to pull Jesus off of his throne and set ourselves there instead. God, why don't you just do what we want? Then all these problems would go away. Can you see why that mega church pastor's sermon sounded so good? God has placed everything under your feet, under my feet. That's what I want to hear. Then I don't have to wait for God. The greatest problem in my life isn't a virus, it's me. Because my sinful heart refuses to submit to King Jesus. Does yours? Instead, I want to be king. Yet, can you see how God is using this pandemic to knock us off our thrones? The I can be my own king attitude just doesn't work. For Christ Jesus to, to reign in, in our hearts and our lives, First, God needs to empty us of ourselves. He needs to bring us down low so that humbly, with repentant hearts, we look up to him. You tell that that's exactly what God's doing in our lives, in our world right now. He's knocking us off our thrones so that we, we have to look up to Jesus. Because when we look up to Jesus, do you know what we see? We see hope. We see riches. We see power. We see exactly what you and I need. We see our 
our king. Our king who, who called us even before he made the world. Our king who, who saved us when he died for us on the cross. Our king who rose from the dead. Our king who reigns for us. We see that all things are under Jesus' feet. I need to be reminded of that every single day. It makes me think of a, a movie I, I watched once. It's a movie about a young lady who, who struggles with her memory. She has a strange memory condition in which her mind is stuck on, on one day. No other new memories can stick in her mind. Every day she wakes up thinking it's the same day and she can never remember what happened the day before. Well, in the movie, a, a man falls in love with this woman. The problem is that she can't ever remember any of the, the wonderful experiences that they have together. And so every single day, that man has to convince the woman all over again of his love for her. Every single day, he has to remind that woman of, of their relationship together, of, of all they've done with each other. Doesn't that sound like what God has to do with us? Every single day, our sinful natures try to push the, the good memories of God out of our minds. Every single day, our sinful natures try to, to replace ourselves as the the king in our hearts. And so every single day, God comes to us and he reminds us of his love and his power over and over again. God reminds us of what he's done to give us a relationship with him over and over again. He reminds us of this truth that all things are under his feet. Our forefathers here at St. Paul Lutheran Church wanted us to constantly remember that. Here's why I can say that. Can you remember what's in the big stained glass window in the front of our church? When the Christians who came before us at our church designed our, our beautiful church building, they decided to put in the biggest stained window, stained glass window. What, what picture's up there? It's today. It's Ascension Day. It's a picture of Jesus ascending into heaven with everything under his feet those wise Christians before us, that's what they wanted us to have in our minds every single time we walk into church, every single time we come into God's presence, we can look up and see King Jesus and we can remember everything is under his feet. I know it might not look that way in your life right now, but everything's under his feet. When that cancer news comes, you know without a doubt that cancer is not under your feet. But you can be reminded on Ascension Day by Jesus that cancer is under his feet. When you have to face that court date, it's under his feet. When you worry about your pregnancy, it's under his feet. When you see that sick loved one, it's under his feet. When you're anxious about what the future might bring, it's under his feet. May God teach us to pray. God, open our eyes. Open the eyes of our hearts to see the, the hope, the riches, the power that flows out of Jesus. There is no better king. There is no better king than Jesus. Whatever you're facing in your life today, just look up. Look up and know that it's under his feet. Amen. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, you know how our sinful natures every single day insist on us fighting to be the, the king in our lives. Our sinful natures in, insist on filling us with this foolish thought that life should be under our control. You send things like this pandemic to knock us off our thrones, to put us down low so that we look up to you. And then today on Ascension Day, you remind us that when we look up to you, we see the hope of the calling that you've given us. We see the riches of the inheritance that you prepared for us in heaven. We see the incomparably great power with which you rule the world and our lives for our good. King Jesus, help us to put our trust in you. In your name we pray. Amen.